So, here we go. Cave girls, cat fights, and fur bikinis. A Stone Age movies romp. There were several of these kinds of uh, cave girl movies made in the 60s, early 70s. And we're going to start off with the most iconic of them all. One million years BC, when Rakhal Welsh burst into the silver screens in Britain and then America in that fur bikini, creating one of the most iconic posters ever designed. 1966, John Richardson stars alongside her as the caveman Tumac. Notice that there's always a black haired tribe and a blonde haired tribe. That seems to be the way it goes. And John Richardson is the black haired guy and Raquel Welsh is the blonde girl. She's not completely blonde. She's a bit more of a sort of auburn redhead, really. Anyway, what happens? Tumac has a fight with his clan, the rock people, gets chucked out, goes wandering in the desert. And Raquel Welsh picks him up and takes her to her tribe and her tribe are all sophisticated doing cave paintings and making shell beads and they're all living in harmony whereas Tumac's tribe are all brutish and horrible people all grunting and groaning no language in these films the language is all Akita 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 that's about the only word. I think there might be a couple of other words, but that's it. Anyway, Raka Welsh as Luana goes back to the dark-haired tribe with Richardson as Tumac, and they there's jealousy there because a girl likes Tumac and is jealous of Luana, and this girl's played by Martin Martine Beswick. And she'll come up again as we go along. So then we get a good cat fight, and then the two protagonists have to escape again, and they go off wandering. And there's dinosaurs made by the great Ray Harryhausen, who's famous for Jason and the Argonauts and various other films with his stop motion animation. Love stop motion animation. I mean, there's not enough dinosaurs in this movie, but. They sort of move in a surreal, kind of slightly jerky way. Um, great stuff compared to today's CGI where everything looks smooth and kind of unreal. These dinosaurs were great, especially the bit where the pterodactyl or whatever it's called, the flying dinosaur, comes down and picks her racco up and takes her back to the nest and Tumac has to, Tumac has to go up and save our heroine. Anyway, brilliant film. Uh, there's a bit in it where the two of them end up in this kind of cave that's very weird and there's these kind of eight men cannibals down there. It's a very strange part of the film, um, which I really like. Anyway, a year later in 1967, this Martin Beswick appears in the second movie, Prehistoric Women, Acker slave girls. Now these movies are made by Hammer, the great British company famous for horror films, Dracula and Christopher Lee and all that stuff. And of course they, they were very famous for a lot of cleavage as you can see. The cleavage was very much on show and uh, they developed this into the uh, fur bikini style cave girl movies. Anyway, this one's a bit different. There is language, perfect British English kind of accents. Guy gets lost in the African desert or he's hunting and he touches a great idol of the local people and they're gonna string him up and cut his nuts off. But he goes through some kind of portal and ends up in this kind of prehistoric world where the dark haired women, namely Martin Beswick as the queen, They've got all the blonde haired women as slaves and she wants him but he falls in love with someone else, Adina Rone, I think her name is, 
uh, his love interest and it's all there's cat fights again because there's always got to be a cat fight and it, oh, oh there's, there's a there's no dinosaurs man where are the dinosaurs there's no creatures all there is is like this white rhinoceros that they all kind of idealize so I don't know what that's all about. I can't really find the film. I don't really have much of a memory of it. And is it worth watching? I think it's one of the poorest of this uh, group of movies Hammer did. But there you go. Let's move on. Then they decided, Hammer, to do another one based on the success of Raquel's film, One Million Years BC. They made When Dinosaurs <laughs> Rule the Earth. Sorry about the roosters in the background there's a lot of roosters around here um, yeah so Raquel Welsh wouldn't do this movie she'd had enough uh, she said that in one million years BC her fur bikini kept getting smaller uh, every shot you know and she'd had enough of that so they got this uh, actress from America Victoria Vetri who I thought was Italian maybe Italian American blonde and uh, they, they couldn't get Ray Harryhausen to do the uh, effects again, so they had another guy do the stop motion and they cut a lot of money from the budget and a lot of scenes. Uh, there's a famous scene where she, she rests, she's gonna be sacrificed, but she has to escape and she meets the dark haired people who, who are a bit better than the blonde haired people this time because the blonde haired people are trying to kill these these uh, virgins for sacrificial reasons. Anyway, she takes this kind of rest in a giant egg in a dinosaur nest and a, a, another egg hatches and she tames the baby dinosaur and then she tames its mother and uh, she uses these to get back uh, her own tribe. Now, it's not a really great movie, this. Um, at the time, it was quite imaginative. Uh, when you're a kid and you or an adolescent and you watch these movies and they're all running around in their skimpy outfits and there's dinosaurs and stuff, it was brilliant. Anyway, in this movie we also got Magda Kanopka and we've got Imogen Hassel as supporting actresses and we also have Patrick Allen who was very famous in Britain for, I can't remember what he specifically done but he was always on TV and in cheap kind of movies Anyway, there's a lot of grunting again because there's no, there's no language going on. So there's a lot more Akita, Akita. What Akita means, we have no idea. It kind of means anything that they want it to mean. Anyway, that's that one. Let's go on to then the last one of this series, Creatures the World Forgot. Now, there's no actual creatures in this movie apart from the odd gazelle from Africa appearing or a porcupine or stuff like that. No no real special effects so I gather the creatures are actually the cavemen and women and this stars Julie Edge. Now, Julie Edge was a Norwegian actress who, who was very beautiful actually and uh, she appeared in uh, some Bond movies as did Martine Beswick again she appeared in Bond movies and uh, Julie Edge and Tony Bonner, the same kind of story, uh, there's some trouble, they run away, they find each other, there's a cat fight because the woman's jealous of Julie Edge and Julie Edge is jealous of the woman and she gets all wrapped up in a python and he has to save her and uh, the python looks a bit limp and it's not a great python scene but maybe it's dead, maybe it's drugged, maybe it's not real, I don't know. Anyway, so she's in that with uh, Marcia Fox and Sue Wilson. Yeah, so Julie Edge was in Up Pompeii, if you remember Up Pompeii. That was Frankie Howard was a saucy British comedian and made these uh, TV shows about Rome where he's a slave and he, he's dictating the stories to us. And she appears in that and she's rather juicy, as you may see. Let's add one more. When Women Had Towels, what a strange Italian comedy, starring 1970, starring Senta Burger. Senta Burger appeared in my Sam Peckinpah review some time ago. Not a film worth watching, uh, but it's very strange, very odd, 
and uh, Centre Burger does her, does her best in it and good luck to her. In part two of this Cave Girls Cat Fights and Fur Bikinis we'll move on from the 60s and early 70s and look at some movies uh, doing the prehistoric thing after the 60s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s. So that's the end of that. I do want to say that I only just heard that Racco Welsh died uh, February 2023. As I was making this coincidentally in February 2024, I came across that researching this, I came across the news that she had died a year previously. So I just want to take this opportunity to say what a fantastic actress she was. She starred in many, many films. She was a true screen goddess, uh, the stuff of adolescent dreams. And she was a great sport. And there's some of the films she starred in here. And an uh, intelligent lady. Were these films of the fur bikinis really objectify, objectifying women? Kind of, yeah. But also, someone like Racco Welsh never really showed everything. She was always kind of modest. And it's what you don't see that adds the mystery to it. And we've kind of forgotten that in the years following. Running about in skimpy bikinis is all well and good, but it got too hardcore after that. And that became too acceptable. So I love that kind of old fashioned, slightly erotic, slightly exotic kind of feel. And I want to pay homage to Racco Welsh, a great, great actress, great sex symbol, maybe the last and not looking like a stick insect, like a lot of women in films do today. They do like that curvy uh, shape to women that Hammer really brought out in people. By the way, When Women Had Towers was not a Hammer movie. Okay, so that concludes this review, and uh, thanks for watching and listening, and uh, I'll see you about.